My name is Peter Moore. I live in Boston. I've toured around the world. My main instrument is the piano, but I play other instruments too. I have a band called Count Zero, and I started performing stuff solo. I got a record that I just put out, a CD called One Ride, and I hope you enjoy it. I see you sleepwalking down past reception. Here's the advice, but you be so kind. I started with music uh, at a very young age. We had a piano in the house, and uh, I started plunking around on that, and uh, then I taught myself guitar, and then I taught myself drums when I was in high school, and um, a little bit of saxophone, and you know, that kind of stuff. As soon as the technology came out to be able to record yourself on top of yourself, uh, multi-track technology, and once that became affordable, uh, I saved up my money to get the first four-track. That, that started me off on getting really into you know, making my own music. And, uh, you know, I suppose because I could play the instruments and stuff, it afforded me a sense of control that I liked. I'm dropping trout. I'm dropping trout for you, baby. It means I love you. I'm dropping trout, yeah, yeah. I'm dropping trout for you, baby. It means I love you. The new CD is called One Ride. It's about a guy in the course of his one ride through a relationship. So it starts in the beginning with him being infatuated and then asking the girl out on the next song and then, um, you know, going on the first couple days or two and then kind of settling in and then pretty <laughs> pretty quickly, like by the fifth song, it starts going downhill. And um, then by the, I don't know, eighth song, it's, uh, you know, she leaves him. Um, and then the last song, he's going back and starting the cycle all over again. So it's sort of like how love relationships can be cyclical, um, which I've always found kind of fascinating because every time it feels like a brand new thing. So there's all these, the, the songs kind of are snapshots of each different stage in the relationship. And um, as I write a song, I want the style uh, of, of, of how the song sounds and the style of the music to, to reflect the lyrics. And um, which sometimes means that I'll put out a record with a lot of different styles on it musically, which confuses people. Uh, but um, at least this time, I, I think that it, it makes it a lot more understandable for people uh, that there's a reason why I'm, I'm not just doing that to be a dilettante, or, or uh, I'm, I'm doing it because there's an emotional reason for it. Not only do I change musical styles to adapt to each song, I also change my singing style. I was writing the lyrics to the song, and then at the same time I was recording the demo of the song. So, um, you know, I'd be like, oh, this now I gotta go back to the mic and to sing it, and I realized I still had the pen in my mouth. Um, but it sort of, I, li I like the texture that it gave it. It also, it kind of inhibited my mouth, so I could sound like somebody else more. There's actually a bridge in that song where I, I, I sort of uh, I sound like Brian Wilson. I kind of do this in my mouth, and uh, I don't know why. Why do I feel I have to sing like Brian Wilson in the bridge of that one specific song? I don't know. It just sounded better, you know. And uh, it's, sometimes there's more of a logic to it, and sometimes it's just what feels right. So. You know, these are things that handicap you uh, when you're trying to market yourself because you're changing styles and you're changing your singing style, and um, but. I, I've never, I don't know, that just doesn't bother me. I don't, that's the way I make stuff. I'm, it, I, I want it to sound like different things. I don't want it to sound like one thing. I hate buying records that sound the same from song to song. It just drives me nuts, you know. Yeah. 